This is the thing. Who you choose to hang around with, who you choose to have in your posse, is exactly who you become. Choose your posse wisely. I'm here to tell you that putting yourself first is not selfish, it's revolutionary. Welcome to the Ayurvedic Woman Podcast, empowering women to light their lives on fire through Ayurveda, yoga, spirituality, and fitness. I'm going to say this one last time. Stop apologizing. Women do this all the time. They apologize for everything. What are you feeling sorry about? Stop. If you do not put yourself first, nothing else happens. Stop putting everybody in front of you and put yourself first so that those people that you need to care for and take care of can be cared for because you have put yourself as the priority. Jai Bhagwan, Woman Warriors, and welcome to the Ayurvedic Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Satyavani. So happy that you're here. And I have my fabulous, beautiful, gorgeous friend and co-host. Prashna Madhavi. Yep. Thank you. And she's so awesome. <laughs> Cooler than me. Soon Whatever. she'll just take over the podcast and it'll be Whatever. easier for everybody. So today we have an incredibly special guest, um, a woman who is very dear to my heart and um, has been a uh, colleague and friend of mine, um, Christine Souza of True North Awakening. Is that correct? It is. Thank okay. you. Okay. And uh, before we get started with Christine and all of the amazing things it is that she does, and it's actually a really interesting time that you're on this podcast today, so I'm very excited about it. But before we do that, we will do our weekly wellness check-in. So, Prajna, how are we doing? Uh, wow, uh, we are doing pretty good. I am doing well. Uh, I just had during school, so... It's the one full movie that my kids watch in my class um, called Bajrangi Bajan. All You've right. never seen it. Represent. It's Bollywood. It's <laughs> great. There is music. There is dancing. Um, of and they... which I have you on video doing yeah. Bollywood dancing. <laughs> yes. Okay, so yes. So I'm going to pop it. that onto YouTube, you guys. <laughs> You're going to see this shit. Oh, yes. it was awesome. But... So, and the kids really enjoyed it. Like That's they, great. they think it's kind of silly at first, but I'm like, it's a great story. Like just, yeah. just give it a chance. And they're, they How just. How long is that movie? It's over two hours. Oh wow, it's a long okay. one. It has an intermission. Oh my god. Yes. Do, do they get popcorn at that time? <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> They try to bring their own food, but I tell them, no, you okay. can't bring your own food. Um, so I was, the last two days I've been watching that, and actually four days, and I have been so productive. <laughs> I'm back at my computer just like doing PowerPoints and getting all my stuff ready for next semester and sending people stuff. And nice. it's just so nice to feel that productive that I have that time that yeah. I can get stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of my work uh bonus and then uh i've been doing a lot of the um fit body boot camp classes this week got a couple Yay. in shout out for rich and Jeannie. yes um, and also coach jesse and tina represent. <laughs> yep. and that's been really great i've been doing the ones that in the evening so just fixing my kind of eating schedule mm -hmm. around that class is always a little bit challenging but i just kind of eat like an old person at about 4 30 in the afternoon and so totally. it do me pretty well. Hey, um, those those folks had it right. Yeah, I remember I, I used to make fun of my grandmother. Like she's like, "Let's go to IHOP at four o'clock." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> now I'm like, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah, let's eat it for. Let's I'm all about that. Not necessarily at IHOP at IHOP, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yes. Give it time to digest. Um, so so that's been really good. Like emotionally, I feel like I had a good emotional release within the last two weeks, nice. and that was really great. So I'm feeling. Um, good that way so really all levels just feeling feeling pretty good awesome so yeah awesome yeah very cool how about you Sadimani? wow so this this week it's very interesting you know the the yin and yang of life um, which i think is very underrated um and i've checked in actually with both of you this week um this week we have um some extenuating family circumstances that are happening um my father-in-law is getting ready to transition so um that's it's both 
it's actually really interesting because when you've when you've been on this path of doing this work for so long, um, and Christine and I had this discussion the other day, that the acceptance of that, um, the acceptance of, of death and rebirth and, and all of that is just framed differently for you, you know, when, you, when you've kind of been practicing mm -hmm. this kind of work all the time. So, um, but it's very interesting to see folks on the outside, like other family members, et cetera, who haven't been doing this work, and that's, you know, one's not better than the other, it's just different. When they haven't been doing this kind of work, um, how clinging to the material world it can be. Yeah. And um, and I, I get that. I totally get that. I mean, and then I have on, like, my side of the family, my mom just had a, um, a knee replacement, and she's doing great. Um, but... She, as she said to me today, she's like, I'm just not a good patient. And and I understand that, too. I don't know many people who are. I, I know. I know. Yeah. And so she she's feeling, you know, restless and all of that. And she's like, you know, I just don't know how to get over this agitation. And so, you know, being able to say, well, you know, just, just breathe through it, you know, understand that your body is trying to heal itself, et cetera, and just kind of walking through that process. So it's very interesting when you do spiritual practices on a regular basis on all levels of of our being how when you interact in the quote real world out there and people who haven't been doing this kind of work and it's not a superiority complex again it's just different that you know you you get reminded of like oh yeah like that's a thing and like that was me 10 years ago 15 years ago etc where if i had a dying relative um, i'd probably be more Quote, freaked out than I am now. Um, and it doesn't make it any less sad or, or anything. Of course, you know, we, we miss the folks that um, we can't see in bodily form anymore. But I guess I just have this different orientation around it. So it's been, um, from a, a wellness standpoint, it's been very affirming for the work it is that, that we're all doing. And at the same time, also somewhat energetically draining because yeah, it doesn't make it easier. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Just and in some different. ways, it just makes it a little harder, yeah. you know, because you feel like, wow, you know, I, I didn't, I forgot that when people face death and transition, et cetera, that um, this is how people respond, you know, et cetera. So, um, and again, not one better than the other, just very different. Um, and people can sometimes see that as, uh, oh, you're being so strong at this moment. And right. so they kind of want to mm -hmm. cling to you for that strength. Yes. And you're just like, dude, like I, yeah. I'm holding it together right. over here. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And what's what's fabulous is that my, my husband, Michael, um, he does this work too. So he and I can have conversation in this space so it's not like, one person in the household is having more difficulty than the other, et cetera. So, yeah. um, so I, I love and appreciate him for that. Um, physically, I feel great. I feel like I've gotten my mojo back finally. I felt like eclipse season just buried me. I'm like, oh my god, go away. Um, so I feel, and then it did, it, right? <laughs> it, exactly. It like buried okay. me, and then it was like, okay, I'm alive again. So um, I felt good back at Krav this week and back at the gym and and. And at Fit Body, you know, I started teaching this week, so mm -hmm. that was really a lot of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I think all in all, all in all, good. I mean, I'm so happy, and it's so timely that Christine is on the show today, so we can talk about death, because death is a very interesting thing. It's a very interesting topic, so I'm excited to dive into that. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, girl? How are you? How are you doing? So good. Thank you so much for having me. Well, of course. I'm so thrilled. Um, I. You know, I feel I feel so euphoric most days, mm -hmm. um, and I started moving my body again, which feels really good. Yay. Um, sometimes I feel a disconnect, though, like I'm so out there mm -hmm. that sometimes I forget to kind of ground myself. So mm -hmm. I find myself being kind of, um, oh, um, a little disjointed. So I have sure. to, I feel a little untethered sometimes. Ah, ironic. So, That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. So uh, so I feel really good. This week has been really good. Nice. I feel 
Um, I've had just some, uh, I had a tea ceremony, new moon tea ceremony last night with my nice. girls. And um, that was super powerful. And yeah, so I feel good. Things are good. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I wish I could nourish my body better. I feel mm. physically I'm forgetting that component. So sure. I'm trying to eat more nuts and ground myself. So yeah. yeah. So a little disconnected, not quite there yet, but. So work right in progress. Track. Always. Always a work in progress. And, and actually, I want to highlight that. All of this is a constant work in progress. You know, it's like I, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of folks who are just like, oh, my goodness, you know, how do you stay so healthy? How do you just like, you fucking kidding me? Like, this is a full time job. Yeah. And there are days when it's like, oh, no. And then there are days when it's like, yes. So I totally appreciate the periods of like, oh, you know, I should nourish myself better or I should move my body more, et cetera. Like we go through these ups and downs. I think the awareness around it, though, is what is the key mm -hmm. to really keep that in scope and, um, and moving through. So thanks for bringing that up, Christine. Thanks for having so, me. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Christine, before we dive into our questions, um, Tell us a little bit about you and how you got into the work it is that you do. And for the record, everybody, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, Christine is not only a Reiki master, but she is also what is called a death walker um, or a death doula. And so we're going to talk a lot about that today because I'm super interested. But give us your background story. Like, how did all this happen? Like, where did where did you come from? <laughs> Where did I come from? <laughs> well, um, you know, I think I've always been an inquisitive child. Um, and I I feel like um, from a very young, my mom always said I was a little special. And I just thought maybe she thought I was special, special. But she really just <laughs> meant that. You are that. special. <laughs> Thank you. And she just said that. Um, that I was just a really outgoing social kid and I just had this ability to connect with people and it made my mom super uncomfortable because I was just so friendly. I think maybe she thought someone would steal me or something. My so, mom thought hmm. the same thing, right? Oh, I know, like, where wow. did that come from, right? I wonder why you two get along. <laughs> no. <laughs> Seriously, no, my mom was like, this kid's going to get kidnapped. Yeah, for sure. This is for what's sure. going to happen. Because I just talked to them. Right. You know, I remember as a kid, my mom and my sister and I, I grew up in North Idaho mm -hmm. and uh, we took a Greyhound bus from North Idaho to Gulfport, Mississippi. It was four oh days God. and three nights. Oh. And it oh, was on in the, the fourth hound, grade, on the Greyhound bus. Oh, boy. Dang. And we just went down there, and my mom was just so afraid. I was just talking to everyone on the bus. You know, it was just like this interesting conversation that I would have with people. At, t at age 10, my mom was like, get over here. And, <laughs> and I just was having a great time. So it, she was just always worried about me because I, I just was it. social. But I, um, one of my very first jobs was taking care of a woman. Normally kids babysit, but yeah. I grandma sat. And so I took care of a woman who I had dementia. That. And she was in our neighborhood. And so I would just take care of her and her uh, her daughter and son would just go to, uh, you know, on a weekend vacation, and I would just stay with Harriet. And we'd sing gospel music and eat cookies and drink tea, and I just had the best time, and I got paid better mm. than babysitting. Wow. So I did that for Was this in North a Idaho? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so I loved it. And so it was kind of, I wanted to be... No, Connie Chung, I wanted to be the next Connie Chung. I was mm -hmm. going to be a communications major. Oh, my God. And I was on the fast track to do that. And um, and then I somehow ended up moving to California and working at a nursing home because it paid better than working at Roundtable Pizza. So, yeah, I, yeah. so I did that, and I loved it. And, wow. um, and my grandfather had had several strokes, several strokes at a time. So I continued to watch him, um, uh, his health decline. And um, so I started taking care of people and people like were so afraid of people that were dying. And I was just the person that just sat next to the bed and I just was there. I'd stay after my shift if the family wasn't there and I would just stay with them. And, and I wasn't afraid of death for some reason. And so I... Um, you literally carried that childlike innocence with you throughout your life because children aren't really afraid of death either. They're yeah. fearless in so many ways. So, yeah. wow, I'm sorry. I just wanted to interject that because I could see that in you. So I just felt comfortable. I wasn't ever afraid. And my grandfather passed away when I was 20. Um, and it was kind of, it was a blessing. 
And my first experience at, at a funeral was, <laughs> it was in San Jose, and there was a family. It must have been a real tragic death, but the you know, when you go to the funeral home for the viewing, mm-hmm. there could be another viewing going on at the same time. And the family next door was just wailing. And we were kind of having a good time, to be honest with you, because we were happy for Grandpa that he passed. Right. And um, and he and they kind of the they kind of did something with his lip and he looked like he was kind of smirking and we were all kind of laughing at, you know, it was my mom always had kind of this like you know, this is really sad, but she also could find humor and just bring joy to some really hard times. And so, so we were having a moment with grandpa. And then the next day we went out to the cemetery and my great uncle had a massive heart attack at the cemetery. When I was 20, that was the first time I ever administered CPR on a live person, which is not the same as doing it on a mannequin. I, I was, uh, it is really hard oh, to do mouth to mouth on someone. Yes, it is. And so I had this, especially this, an adult, an adult, and he was he was a larger man, and yeah. it was horrible because half my family was, you know, we're all grieving my grandfather, and my great uncle is has a massive heart attack at the cemetery. Oh my goodness. It's horrible. And so half my family left to go to the hospital to be with him, and the rest of us tried to gather ourselves and, you know, say goodbye to our, my grandfather. And so that's st- why well, I was in nursing school at that point. And so mm-hmm. I started my first nursing job as an oncology nurse, and I loved it. I loved it, loved it. I think I had seen so many people die at that point that mm-hmm. um, it became kind of hard. So I was 22, and I had probably seen, I don't even know how many people had people pass away. So that was a lot. So I took a break from that, and um, yeah, life went on, and I started doing clinic nursing, and I found... Um, like I kept having this nudge, like I think I really want to do end of life work. And um, my dad passed away very quickly um, after a cancer diagnosis um, almost 15 years ago now. And it was beautiful. It was Mm. probably the most beautiful death. You know, I think what really um, inspired me to go into this work was, you know, those little soft voices that you hear, those little quiet voices Mm -hmm. like, oh, you to do this you need yeah. to do this and my dad and I didn't were very close we were when I was a kid but um I kept getting this nudge hey why don't you get to know your dad and he was kind of a little angry you know mm-hmm. he's, he had some stuff he was in Vietnam and we just mm-hmm. really we really kind of I knew more than him obviously, obviously. I, I, I you know, I'd freely admit that I don't but um but uh <laughs> but um but uh, I, I just kept getting that nudge get to know your dad and so I got the call he was really sick and so I was there with him when he passed away he was diagnosed and passed in 54 days wow that's and fast I'm happy for him though you know yeah. so he died at 63 and which is young that's right? very young very young that's very young but um but he got to go out the way that he wanted and um, my mom was really sick and we decided to we thought she would go first but anyway everybody died in short amount of time like my mom my mother-in-law my father-in-law the dog we had a catastrophic catastrophic fire that happened in our community and so within two years a lot of people passed away wow and so that's fascinating it's like what are you doing with your life right and so it made me it forced me to look at my own mortality Mm -hmm. and how i want to spend the the rest of my life whatever i have left so the the term death doula came into my awareness i was meditating actually I'd never heard the phrase before, and I was like, what am I supposed to be doing? Because I loved my job, but it was hard. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I think you need to be a death doula. And I started Googling it, and within three days, three different people on three different occasions said, what do you, you need to check into this death doula thing. So that started my journey of, like, yeah. that's what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, you actually just walked right into our first question mm-hmm. and about, you know, You've identified yourself as, as a death walker, like with me, and uh, I, I'm not dying for the record. I just, <laughs> I just, at least, well, actually, I am every single day. Every I'm single dying, day. but but there's no diagnosis that is uh, that is uh, accelerating that process. But um, could you give our listeners a bit more about what that actually is and where that term comes from? So you know, we have gotten so far away from dying like they're like um, the number one fear used to be public speaking and now Mm -hmm. it's death and Mm -hmm. death and covid has done such a number on society that death Mm -hmm. is now the number one fear and um 
And so we, we, everybody died at home. Not It was less than 100 years ago. Like, we knew how to do this. Yeah. And we have. <laughs> knew how to die. We, <laughs> we did. And, we did, and our families True. and our communities nurtured us and took care of us. So there were death doulas. I mean, they've been doing this for centuries. So it's not a new concept. Yep. I think it's just, I think since COVID, I think that, um, I think with our healthcare system is COVID a did nightmare. another um, <laughs> number on the healthcare system. And I think mm-hmm. it's becoming very obvious that our healthcare system cannot sustain the number amount of people that are getting sick. And so we need people from the community. We need family members to take care of our loved ones. They do this in other cultures, right? In other countries. We, we know how Always. to do this. Yes. And so, so it's not a new concept. Right. I think it's just having death is having a rebirth, especially since COVID. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because with the fear of death, even just mentioning that you are a death doula, it's like, ooh. Yeah, I know how to clear out a party. Yeah. Like, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? They're like, oh, God, I don't want to well, I need another drink. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll find oh, someone that's that interesting. Can we talk <laughs> later? No. Or they lean in and ask more questions, yeah. you know. So. See, I find it fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, your kind of people are the people I want to know right. at the end. Right. Like, oh no, let's seriously. bring them in. Yeah. Seriously, because when when Safari, our um, our beloved cat, was uh, was passing, I reached out to Christine, and you were so helpful. Of which, by the way, she's also an animal communicator. I mean, like, the whole package is right here. If you need anything regarding transition, this is your gal, and just the information that you know you provided was. It's just helpful. It's just so helpful. And we need more of that in our community. I think we hide death. Um, You know, having been raised Catholic, it was, you know, death was a very dark, scary thing. And I remember going to my grandfather's funeral as a young person and having an open casket and, and being afraid to, you know, because everybody was like dark and and crying and it was like it wasn't a celebration it was like this is scary and like we put them in a box and we put them in the ground and that's what we do and you know as a young child you're like you're like i I just got here like like you know know i'm saying like like i've been on this planet for about eight years now like you know i don't i don't get that and nobody was there to explain it you know where actually that conversation really should be had from the the day that we're born So what have you found then in your experience as a death doula, or I guess, what are some significant experiences that you have had that kind of stand out to you? Um, I beg everyone to tie up your loose ends. I think that, Mm -hmm. you know, they talk about the top five regrets of the dying. You know, I wished I wouldn't have worked so hard. I wish that I would have stayed in touch with my friends. I see so many people at the end of life. You know, we have our our given family, you know, yep. our, our family of birth, but then we have these friends, you know, that are really become family. And yes. I was talking to a 102-year-old a couple days ago. And, Damn. and I, I'm always trying to get the juice. Like, yeah. how did you make it? And they're yeah. like, I'm just yeah. as surprised as you are that I'm still here. You know? That's it. <laughs> That's that, all that, you're that, getting. That's the trick. Yeah. And so, but she was like, I wish I would have. She was um, in the in the Navy and she uh, was, uh, she was in the Navy and was alive during World War. She worked or she served in World War II. And wow. she, she was just talking about, I wish I had some really good friends at that time. I wished I would have stayed in touch with them. But, you know, during the war after Pearl Harbor, happened you know and the war you know ended a Mm -hmm. while later she uh she said I wish I would have stayed in touch with those friends so I think I I think going back to the tying the loose ends I think it was really important for me when my I I didn't have such a close relationship with my parents as I wished I would have but I once I knew that I had an opportunity to not everybody gets the chance. Sometimes you don't, somebody dies suddenly, you don't get to tie up those loose ends. But I feel like that was such a blessing that I got to tie up those loose ends. And so yeah. I hear that a lot about, you know, relationships can be mended. Um, you know, all of those final wishes can be, until you take your last breath, there's so much healing that can happen. Probably the most difficult passing I saw was in a, a home where I was actually a hospice nurse. And there was a man who... Um, 
just the whole energy of the house was cold. Like mm. there was, you know, it was a blended family. You could tell. And his house was immaculate and perfect, but it was cold. It felt like a loveless house. Wow. And, um, and he was, it was probably the most difficult passing that I've seen because he was suffering in a way that, um, that no medication could help him. Right. Because he had many loose ends, a lot of unfinished business. Um, and it wasn't like them sharing their story. I could just feel that there yeah. was such suffering going on mm. that it just broke my heart. So yeah. I encourage people to, you know, say the things that you need to say. We never know what tomorrow will bring. Right. And relationships can be mended. Yeah. You know, some, I know some people are kind of jerks and things happen to us that are unforgivable, mm-hmm. but but really forgiving them will set you free as well as yeah. them. And it, I, yeah. I do believe that it will make for a much smoother passing in the end. Yeah, I had a, um, as we talked uh, last AWP uh, weekend, um, my husband um, died in 2016. And so he died alone. Um, his father was there. Um, I was at work. And uh, when you talked about, you know, tying up loose ends, he unfortunately had a fight with his sister a um, couple weeks before he passed. And um, he was really trying to mend that relationship. And he was texting her and trying, and she just wouldn't do it. And then he passed. And it just breaks my heart for her and you know, broke my heart for him that he couldn't have that at the end of his life. Like he couldn't. She couldn't see past her anger to <laughs> let's give him a pass. <laughs> He's kind of in a bit rough spot. <laughs> like, let's but give him a pass on, on that. Yeah, yeah, I. She's that's her karma. Yep. She's gonna have to deal with that, mm-hmm. and she I, hopefully is. It's just, and on top of that, just the fact that he was so resistant to there being anything after death. He just thought it was going to be black. You're done. Like, and that was actually where, you know, watching him pass and how he acted and um, how everything transpired, it just really made me realize I got to get good with death because I do not want that same situation. He was so angry and just fearful of passing and just holding on to the very last minute. Yeah. And um, I just really did not want that for myself. So it's been, um, I don't know, the last five years, I think that's what led me to you, to be honest. Aww. And to people like you, that, mm-hmm. you know, that drive to like, I do not want to feel this way yeah. at the end of my life. Yeah. Um, I, I love that you shared that story. And I love this idea of tying up loose ends, Christine, because you know, all of the things that we talk about and we teach in the in the Woman Warrior Academy, not only about getting good with death, but allowing yourself to clear your karma. And that's what I feel tying those loose ends up is. It's like, just let that, that samskata, that, 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 that rub just clear so that you don't have to come back and learn that lesson again. You know, whether whether you believe in an afterlife, whether you believe in reincarnation, whether you don't, I mean, none of that really matters, but the soul does take those imprints with it. And like at the, one of the things that I feel really good about in my day-to-day life, like, yeah, you know, we we have arguments with people that we love and and, You know, we say stupid shit and and do stupid things and all of that, of course. I mean, that's part of the human experience. But if somebody were to say, okay, I walk out of this podcast today and I get struck by lightning and I die instantly, I actually am like, I'm good. I'm good. Like the things it is that I've wanted to say, the things, the actions I've wanted to, to take, the people that I've wanted to bring closer to me, the people that I needed to remove from my life. Like I feel good about that, and I think that's a daily practice. You can say something. Prosh. Well, so Michael Singer in the Untethered Soul, the Untethered Soul, backs up that idea. Um, so on page one fifty-seven, uh, paragraph. The question is: Are you going to wait until the last moment to let death be your teacher? Bingo. The mere possibility of death has the power to teach us at any moment. 
A wise person realizes that at any moment they may breathe out and the breath may not come back in. It could happen at any time, in any place, and your last breath is gone. You have to learn from this. A wise being completely and totally embraces the reality, the inevitability, and the unpredictability of death. Wow. So, Did you have that passage reserved? Yes, I did. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, like we just walked right into we that. Did. Like I, right into I it. love when the flow happens just ready. like that. No, and it's it's true. I think that we, you know, and I, I'd be curious to to ask. Um, I'm thinking of like how can you yeah. assist in like a good transition or in a good death? Yep. Like because you can't say, "Well, you better tie up all those loose ends." <laughs> right, like, right, right. how do you kind of mold that or do you just kind of witness like what both the process i think ideally for me as a death doula would be to get in as soon as i can Mm -hmm. um you know i do reiki for hospice patients currently and i even though i'm not their doula i feel like i am doulaing them as Mm -hmm. they go because oftentimes i'm seeing people once a week Mm -hmm. it's fascinating the people that are dying are not afraid to talk about death it's everyone else around that doesn't want to talk about it they're like la 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 I don't want to talk about it because they're just jammed up in their own grief and their anticipatory grief and their suffering and and but the person that's dying is like I want want to talk about this Mm -hmm. and I and regrettably if I would have known them what I would have that I know now I would have been able to have much more um meaningful conversations with my parents but I was unprepared I was losing my parents you know it was all about me (laughs) and Mm -hmm. so of course it is yeah Yeah. and so absolutely helping people to have those conversations early you know and so I you know for one I'm just I feel like I'm still kind of high I get on these Reiki highs because I just completed a Reiki session with a woman prior to coming here Mm. she gets it but she's unusual because she's been on hospice for almost a year now wow that's a long time it's very unusual I was gonna say that's not a a common thing at all but she and I I not I mean I think that everybody is so blessed to have the gift of time conversations can be had those relationships can be repaired but then what do you do you, there's this waiting like okay yes. I'm still here what am I why am I here we've there's all these questions problem. yeah mm-hmm. and so but I I am so grateful because we've been we have the most like I become the secret keeper like you know I'm holding yeah holding things, space holding space for them and and so she, we did a, a guided meditation, and she's so into meditation. And she um, has a fear of water, but she wanted to go into the ocean today. So mm-hmm. I guided her into the ocean, and it was like the most beautiful experience that we both had, just to bear witness to her walking past this fear. And she went into the water, and she floated. I said, you can swim. You could do whatever you want. And she woke up afterwards and said that was the most profound experience. She said, I think this is what death looks like because she said, um, as you, it's like transitioning from this life to the next. It's no different. It's just the same. It's, she says, you're ju- it's just energy. She is not like a person that you, she is, she has a strong religious faith and you mm-hmm. would not guess that she would be into Reiki mm-hmm. at all, but she gets the energetic body and being able to just uh, surrender into this process. Wow. She's been my greatest teacher. I'm so grateful that she's still here, even though I know it's super hard for her to be like, why am I still here? Right. Hmm. But, wow. Yeah. And you're really assisting in that tying up of loose ends for the person, you know, like her being able to overcome that fear of water. I mean, that was probably a loose end for her. You know, yeah. and and that fear of the, of the unknown, I mean that that to me is really amazing, and I, I love how you have blended your doula process with the, the Reiki energy healing. Can you talk a little bit about that? How those two things came together? How they work together in your work? To me, they go hand in hand, right? Because Reiki is um, something that. I can't explain. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand it, to be honest with you. I just know that I feel better when I do Reiki on myself, and I have... Um, and can you give just, like, three sentences, just for listeners that may not know what Reiki is? I mean, we, we all know, because mm-hmm. we've done it, had it, love it, the whole thing, et cetera. At least but, the tangible pieces of Reiki. Yes. It is, there is stuff that's hard to explain. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if there's anything tangible that you can explain so that people don't think that, like, 
hey, do I meet my Reiki dealer you know, <laughs> in, the, in the parking lot? And, and I give her 50 bucks? Yeah, you know, kind exactly. of thing. So, so for those of you that don't know what Reiki is, um, Christine will explain a little bit for us. So Reiki, kind of in a nutshell, my elevator pitch is that it's a complementary or integrative therapy that um, aids in stress reduction and promotes deep relaxation. Oftentimes people will be, their eyes will roll or just like, what the heck is that? Um, but really it just aids in um, getting into a deep relaxed state. We're all in a state of constant stress and Reiki will help to uh, reset that nervous system so that we can have some calm and peace. Yeah. Mm. Love them. Thank you. I just want to make sure that that happens. So, so the two going hand in hand. Sick. So the two going hand in hand. They do. I think that they're beautiful. Um, I think as we are preparing for death, you know, I think so, uh, so I have one son, and when I so death and birth to me are like the laboring process. They're no different to me. Birth and death are the same. They're mm-hmm. really no different. Um, and so I have had girlfriends who have just like, <laughs> you know, and the baby is delivered. You know, it's just like that easy for them, right? <laughs> like, Thanks, just like bro. three hours later, <laughs> I've had my baby. And for me, it was days, and it was not, you know, not that fun and mm-hmm. so um so to it's me, okay that it wasn't that fun <laughs> it was fucking yeah, off exactly. it was, it was okay. that's why i didn't have one <laughs> just letting you know i don't know if the women that say deliver you know labor is just lovely and i'm like that was not my experience at all yeah. but death is the same thing so we have this laboring process that we go through and so Reiki has been such a beautiful therapy that will kind of help prepare them to me Mm -hmm. because we are more than our physical body. We're our emotional, spiritual, mental, um, physical, but we are, we are more than just this. And Mm -hmm. so what Reiki can do is kind of penetrate our energetic system to allow things to be naturally released. And so Mm -hmm. to me, it only makes sense to be help the body to prepare. And I love doing guided imagery because it helps them to, when the shit hits the fan, maybe they can go to their place of peace and comfort to remember. So it's like building a muscle. Okay, I I know how to do this. We all know how to die. Our bodies know how to die. And I think Reiki just helps to kind of soften the edges a little bit so that they can have a softer landing. Mm. Oh, I love that. That's not mine. That is someone my deepest... Um, uh, mentor Gabby Jimenez. Um, yes. She's she's a death doula, and that's her phrase. So I want to shout give out to her Gabby. Gab- Gabby. Woo-hoo. Shout out to Gabby. Uh, thank you, Gabby, and thank you for allowing Christine to channel that through. I um, I want to make sure that I die first, so that you're there with me. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we're yes. gonna make a That'd contract. Be nice. okay. That'd be nice. Yeah, that I'm going first. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. And yep. uh, make sure that uh, that you are you are there with me. That's so. an honor. Yeah. Thank you to yes. be considered for that. Prajna, next question. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and I, on top of that, I, w- I remember reading as you know, Joe was kind of towards the end of life. Um, I read the Tibetan book of the Tibetan book of the dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it mentioned how uh, having a, a vision of what you're going to see when you die, like creating your own vision um, Mm -hmm. was very helpful. And so I started doing that. And um, I, when I close my eyes, I see this, you know, bright, beautiful place and and Joe's there and my dog Bonsai is there. Bonsai! (laughs) Of course. So that kind of leading into my next question, um, you also work with pets. You've worked with, you've worked with Bonsai, you worked with Safari. In what situations would you suggest people have work done on pets or call you about pets anytime yeah. anytime you know um i think any any time is good animals are so sensitive to energy right? oh my god they Marrakesh? are the best healers oh my god Marrakesh, he's crazy <laughs> he, he, he he is just <laughs> off the chain and like you helped us so much when we first got him but i don't want to interrupt i will share that story later <laughs> I love it. I love yes. it. You know, there's good. There's so. It's so nice. And to get I love validation. his craziness. And I love his craziness. Oh my god, he's amazing. But you, you like, you tapped in and were like, you gotta let him be who it is that he is. And once that happened, 
Completely different cat. Completely different cat. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry. That's yeah. their nature, right? Yeah. And dogs' natures mm. is just this unconditional love. Yeah. We have a chocolate Unconditional love. love and crazy cats. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so for all of our listeners out there, you're part of the family. Yes. <laughs> One of the two. It's beautiful. Animals are the greatest healers. Mm-hmm. Our dog, we just put our uh, chocolate lab down. He was almost 12. And um, my husband has a, has a cancer diagnosis. And I, I, I know that animals can, they have this awareness, this sense that something is wrong with their with their loved ones yes, and they do. so so it, it's like almost as if they i believe that they come willingly to this planet to help guide us and to mm-hmm. show us unconditional love that mm-hmm. is their job that's what they signed up to do and so our dog when my husband got his cancer diagnosis this was before his diagnosis our dog just would sleep next to him on on the floor and he never mm-hmm. did that before about 6 months later my husband got his cancer diagnosis and our dog never left his the side of the bed it was just the sweetest God, thing he would he would come and like tuck my husband in my husband would do tap 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 on the side of the bed and then he'd go into his bed eventually but mm-hmm. as he got older he just was covered in tumors and i oh. Oh, wonder if maybe he oh. didn't absorb oh my goodness the cancer and i don't oh, i can't goodness. i can't um quantify that yeah but i do oh, feel yeah. like he took on the suffering mm-hmm. um and he became my emotional support person as I was going through my own grief and I do Mm. believe that that's what they're here for because they're just pure light and love and when they pass on that's all like all us people we have all this baggage you know right they're like I'm out like bye bye and they're just pure light and love Mm -hmm. and they're with us always so that's what it was like when when Safari passed it was literally boom 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 like he made the decision and I know that he made the decision because I believe it or not, I actually think that he was preparing my husband for what's happening now um, in a very, very hard but very gentle way. And it was just amazing to witness. Like, he left dignified. I'm like, God, like that kitty taught me so much in that time. And just, they do. They're like, you know, hey, love y'all deuces like i gotta go you know and he like made it and like within five days it was boom boom done and that was it and and you know it's so interesting because we we talk about that michael and i will talk about that like god it happened so fast but like as humans that's all we ever say we're like if it's gonna happen i want it to happen fast like i don't want this mm-hmm. thing to be lingering on it's so, like so he went out in style like exactly how we as humans want it so i'm like hmm note to self Mm-hmm. And you guys did a beautiful job of honoring him. Mm-hmm. And thank you. I mean, I, mean, I would want to be your pet. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, well, if you come back, <laughs> yep, forty four seventy four. That's the number. Back. Yeah, I know. I know. Me either. I'm, I'm going up, girl. Going yeah. up. But yeah. I do hope that you know. I wish that for all pets to yes. have this home where they're, you know, just loved. Just this. I can. I can just yeah. only imagine. That's how I wish. That's what I wish for everyone to just be enveloped in this loving energy yeah. who wouldn't mm-hmm. want to go out that way i'm going out right. i'm surrounded by love i got my i got my family and yep. i'm yeah it was beautiful Absolutely. you just did amazing with it oh thank you thank you no and you were very helpful and integral in that transition process i know that's also when bonsai has had some physical challenges that yep. uh, christine's helped with that as well yep. yep just some back issues and you know definitely not knocking on death's door but I was just like, you know, what's what's up? Like, why does he keep having these issues? And mm-hmm. I don't know. All the other information that he gave me was way more helpful about <laughs> how he was just he's he's protective. Like, I remember you saying that he's he feels like he needs to protect you. And I love oh. the whole thing about how he's royalty. And I'm like, <laughs> you're are telling you, me. Are you think <laughs> both? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> bon- bonsai <laughs> is beyond royalty. Okay, homies, he's got a chariot. <laughs> Then he sits in that she pushes. Yes. It's literally yes. Arjuna and Krishna. I'm like, you've got to be kidding <laughs> yeah. me with this. Oh, he lives large, Bonsai. Yeah, yes, he, he does. does. He's, he's he does. so great. But isn't that what we do, though? It as, is. As pet owners? Because, again, they give us unconditional love. It's like yeah. that's the least, the least we can we do. do. It's return some of that Absolutely. minuscule of it. That's yeah. what we, we, Praj and I, we pass 
back and forth constant like cat and dog memes <laughs> you know on off of instagram it's just so funny it's like oh i'm having a terrible day oh the cat is laying with the chicken i yeah. love that you know like some otter videos exactly. in there from time just to time like the best yeah. there's the best yep i can has cheeseburger man hands down best instagram account ever yeah so yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting to have a relationship with animals it wasn't until I started doing this practice of Reiki and death doula. I, di- I did not have this love for animals. Shamefully, really? I did not. And when so, my, so they weren't a part of your life? Like We had animals uh, growing up, but they right. were always my mom's. My yeah. mom always yeah. had pets, and mm-hmm. too many for that matter. All the cats were having kittens all the time. And <laughs> it was a lot, and we had such a small house, and, and it was just a lot. But, <laughs> she was um, the cat lady. Oh, she, and she oh, it was like, why, did, why didn't we fix these cats? I don't know, but they just kept having kittens and then we had three dogs and such a small house but but they all loved my mom my mom was Mm -hmm. the animal lover and um it's like michael in my house yeah and and so i just didn't have that connection with animals and my mom's uh she she lost all of her pets a very short amount of time and one she chose to put down because there was a transitional period but she lost her dog that she had had for 18 years Mm. and i was 18 years old and i was like yeah, but what about me? Mm-hmm. You know, that was one of my regrets. It's like I was all focused about me and these changes that were happening with me, but she was losing her best friend, you know. Yeah. So I didn't honor that until much later. I didn't recognize that. But now I'll see like an animal, a squirrel that's been hit by a car, and oh, I'm God. in tears. Oh, I'm in tears. Like, I just what can't. the heck happened to me? Oh, no. I know. Oh, I know. And chances are that squirrel was in my yard, you know, like it's just <laughs> yeah. terrible. Eating, eating the walnuts. I know. Uh, so I have a whole new appreciation to the animal world. Like, yeah. I'm, so the sensitivity of life and death of like all beings deserve love and appreciation yeah. and respect. And um, so. I think they're also way more tapped in than we are. Absolutely. You know, they like. Yeah, we uh, think we're so. Oh, I know. We are so. We're so intelligent. <laughs> we're so not. <laughs> no. So like there are times when I just, I will just observe Marrakesh and like. He sees things like he'll just start looking up and he'll like see shadows and he's drawn to energy and all of it. And Bonsai does the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 fascinating. Like they they also see beyond the veil, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Well, Christine, um, we want to know, are you doing trainings for Reiki? Yes. Where can we want to get the word out? So where yeah. can people find you? Where can they get tapped in? Right. True North, what, what do you have for Reiki us? Reiki trainings, um, death doula, um, the, for them to be able to hire you as a death doula, like what that process is, and exactly what Prashna said, like how can they find you? Because you have such amazing gifts. Yes. And like if you need to, folks out there that are listening, if you need to prepare for your personal transition, if your pet is transitioning, if you need some practices that will take the edge off with uh, things that is not alcohol and drugs. Um, this is your gal, so tell us. Thank you. So my um, business is called True North Awakening. You can find me at truenorthawakening.com. And then I have a Facebook page, not so much an Instagram, but mm-hmm. um, but also my website or email uh, truenorthawakening at gmail.com. Yeah, I'd be happy to help anyone who is interested. Wonderful. Uh, end of life work is my passion. So awesome. thank you so much for having me. Oh Appreciate my god, it so much. great! So not done yet. Like, no, we are not. not. The card. <laughs> so we we and you above all people. Like we know that this is going to be awesome. So mm-hmm. as we come to the close of our session and show today, we are doing our oracle card. And this so, is from a new deck that I bought uh, called the Medicine Woman Oracle. Which couldn't be any more appropriate. Catherine Millard. Catherine Millard. Yep. So. Uh, and Christine so already have, chose a card beforehand because we yes. knew this was going to be a robust conversation. So. Yes. Uh, number 16, Coyote Totem, Show Humor, Laughter is your medicine. Ooh. So now it's whether or not I can find this um, quickly. It's okay. Take your time. put this in here. Can we see the card? Yes. You may. Peek there for number 16, the coyote totem. Ooh. That's what it is, friends. And then Christine, you want to... Oh, oh I got it. Oh. I am the spirit of the coyote, the sacred clown. 
I bring you the medicine of laughter so you can take a step back and laugh at yourself. Mm -hmm. I tease and hmm, destabilize so you may find unknown resources inside yourself. Symbolism. Keeper of the southern door, the coyote, the coyote is also called the sacred dog in native traditions. His presence is associated with wiliness and is not always welcomed. His totem is destabilizing. Uh, he hides deep wisdom in what can look like trickery or a bad joke from the universe. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking like death. I'm, I'm f in yeah. my mind, I'm like, yeah. okay, what is this trickery? Uh, what can seem negative or chaotic can conceal hidden truth. The coyote's presence is often troubling. He is a powerful teacher who gives you the opportunity to move away from excessively rigid seriousness and be more cheerful. Mm. His message, don't take the situation too seriously. Cultivate humor and the message will be revealed to you. Guidance. When the coyote appears in a reading, it is to encourage you to show great humor. You may feel someone is playing you, but you don't need to make a big deal of it. Instead, try to open your mind to the incongruous. Change your point of view now. The coyote can also point to a form of self-sabotage. Perhaps you have fallen back into bad habits. If you're facing disappointments or setbacks, laughter will, be, will help affect change more easily. The coyote's presence also invites you to check whether you might be deceiving yourself, telling stories to yourself. Ooh. Wow. So does that resonate at all? The um, Sabbath self-sabotaging, certainly, because mm -hmm. I have a tendency to, like, things get really good, so I must, you know. Something horrible's got to be happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things are going really good. You know, I have a tendency to um, laugh at the most inappropriate times. That's <laughs> I love that. <laughs> kind of awkward, right? <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, and finding humor in something I think about, you know, um, what it reminds me of is um, a man who was passing away and his family was like having the biggest party and um, they were laughing and he wanted to go out listening to like rock music and, and I was kind of like, what's going on in here, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but once that I saw them laughing and kidding and joking, I thought, oh, that's a great way go out that's the way that I would like to go so mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna remember the coyote that the medicine laughter is the best medicine because I can get kind of serious and this work sure. can be pretty serious so I'm taking it as um, kind of keeping things light yeah. yeah as I was reading I was like death is a very heavy again we fear it it can be a very heavy subject for people agree you can bring some lightness and some I'm gonna even maybe have to trick you into <laughs> Doing something a little different here, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think it's it's a. It, I think that a lot of people have such a fear of death that it is um, perhaps a. Um, it can be blinding. It can be, and there's so much fear. You know, allowing people to <clears throat> surrender. You know, that act of surrender, and um, because from what I hear and from what I understand, I've talked to so many people that have had near death experiences or have read so much about it. It ain't that bad on the other side. I've Guess heard what? a lot of people don't want to come back. Right. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. why did you bring me back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember Zach Bush talked about that. Yep. Because he was in um, palliative care. He said a lot of people that we brought back, they're like, I was fine. Right, exactly. Like, 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 why are you fucking with my shit, dude? I want to like, come I'm back fine. here. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. from what I understand, it is just this unconditional love wherever we go. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm sorry that your husband had that experience of not having that <sighs> yeah. faith mm. or that belief system that there is. And, and I honor everyone's belief system, but yep. my belief system is that it is just love, a mm. love that we can't even comprehend um, on this on this planet. Yeah. So, And I have to remember, even though he didn't feel it in this, he, he found it. Absolutely. I was just going to say mean, that. And I think that you have channeled that towards him. Yeah, you know, as you're growing and developing and and shaping, et cetera, like you are that vehicle as well. So I have no yeah. doubt that that Joe is in a completely different space now. Yeah, which is really cool. Yep. Yeah, it's possible. Absolutely. Wow. Mm -hmm. Christine, thank you so much for thank coming you today. So much. Oh my God, this is wonderful, <laughs> folks. True North Awakenings. Yeah. That's the jam. You got to do it. You got to find her. She's the girl. Mm -hmm. 
I also want to um, just share that in February, we have a new program that's coming up. It's called the Dharma Circle. And it is about identifying your dharmic archetype, um, whether you are a healer, an educator, a warrior, a merchant. There's five. Found mine out last night. Exa- did you? Started reading it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there are five main archetypes. And also we take bits of each, et cetera. And then starting 2024 in not only identifying that archetype, but traveling with a group of women that will help you fully embody that archetype because it really is the true essence of who it is that you are and starting to live your life purposefully through that archetype in every stage of the game and in on every level of who you are because i think right now there's a lot of people who are like i want purpose in my life i want to do things purposefully but they have no idea how to get there and so the dharma circle is really focused on women getting there and identifying what their purpose is, identifying the qualities of that, and then every aspect of your life, physically, energetically, mentally, emotionally, consciously, spiritually, financially, in your in your day-to-day work life, et cetera, embodying that and moving forward. So if you are interested, please go to thewomanwarrioracademy.com and look under short courses. And information about the Dharma Circle is there. It will be starting in February. It is um, online. And uh, Prajna and I will be tag teaming with that. And uh, it'll, so everybody, it's available to everybody. It doesn't, you don't have to just be here in Boise. We do have one retreat. Um, it's a nine month program and I think it's gonna be pretty fucking cool. So yeah. I am super excited about that. And uh, I think that's it. Next week we will have a, another special guest that I'm not gonna reveal just yet, but uh, I hope you come back and you listen to us. Yes, one more Prash. shout out. Um, to someone in the room who just got the number one spot in the Boise Weekly, Yoo-hoo. her book Aww. bestseller. So, Thank you. So well done. Cool. Thank you. Yes. yes. I had to give a I, shout out to that. So I, it must be a decent book. I, it's, <laughs> it, it's okay. It, it, maybe it seems buy to be one. okay. And go read it. I uh, I'm actually excited because I was also contacted by an independent bookstore in Kimberly, Idaho. <laughs> nice. Um, and um, also Barnes and Noble in Twin Falls. So I will be there in both of those places doing book signings in the new year so cool. i'm excited so thank you for that i appreciate yeah. it it is the best book ever oh yeah. so I, good i appreciate I've it i've read it twice already thank you <laughs> twice oh my god yeah, thank it's you so good my oh, mom good. just told me that um she has a hairstylist who came over to the house that she's known for a while because of her knee replacement surgery and she's like she read it in one sitting. She's like, she just couldn't put it down. She wouldn't leave until she finished it. So it was very Love sweet. It. it was very sweet. So so if you want to pick up my book, From Pain to Power, please do. Um, would love to have you read it. It's on Amazon, and it's also in local independent bookstore here in Boise, Rediscovered Books. So thank you so much again, Christine. Thank you so much. Oh, thank my you. God. It's so great to be here with you. True North Awakenings, folks. You know how to find her. And everybody, Jai Bhagwan, thank you so much for listening. And as always, may your soul be victorious. Is life hard? Yeah, it's really fucking hard. And you can also have the life it is that you want. You just got to work for it. 